Hi, I'm Robert Reeves with the City of Oklahoma City Utilities Department. If you own an irrigation system, it's very important that you know how to operate your controller. It's the first step in maintaining a healthy landscape without overwatering. Here's an example of a basic controller. Now your controller might not look exactly like this, but it has similar features. Knobs or dials or arrows or buttons. To program a controller, you're going to need to know how to adjust to set the date and time, set the program start times, set individual run times for each station, and how to program watering days such as odd or even. Set the date, turn the controller's dial to set date. Using the arrow buttons, toggle through to each field you need and then use the plus or minus buttons to actually set the month, day, and year. To set the time, you're going to use the arrow buttons to scroll from the hour, minutes, and AM or PM or 12 hour or 24 hour time frame or usually in the 12 hour time frame. Next you'll actually use the plus and minus buttons to actually set the time. This exercise will help you get familiar with how the buttons and dials work. Now your controller may not have dials, it may just have arrows and uh, buttons. As you become familiar with the way that your controller functions, you'll find it a lot easier to be able to program your controller. Now that we have the first step out of the way, let's define a few terms. First, a station or zone is a group of sprinklers that are controlled by one valve. It's very important that you break your yard into different zones based on the water requirements or sprinkler type. Second, program. A program is a group of zones or stations that share the same start time. The start times have nothing to do with how long an individual zone runs. Controllers typically have three or four programs, A, B, C, or D. A program is used for different reasons. You might group all of the pop-up spray zones under program A, while lawn areas with rotors are running under program B, or perhaps you have some new plant materials in your landscape that you may want to put on program C. With the heavy clay soils of Oklahoma, it is a good idea to have more than one start time for each program. This gives the zones time to run and the water to soak into the soil between the watering. This will prevent runoff and water waste. This process is known as cycle and soak. Let's try setting Start times for program A. Make sure that your program is set to program A. And then turn the dial to set watering start times. Now you'll note that each start time is listed here. We have a first start time, a second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. So you'll need to look at your number of zones you have and decide when you want to start your first start time. Let's say we want to make it at 5 o'clock a.m. So it's already set for 5 o'clock a.m. If you don't want a second start time, you want to make sure there is nothing there. You want to delete it. But if you do want a second start time, that's where you would use your plus or minus buttons to set a start time. So our first start time was 5 o'clock a.m. Let's make our second start time at 7 o'clock. If you want a third start time, use your arrow buttons, 
go to three, third start time, and let's make our third start time at nine o'clock. And this is gonna vary from, from yard to yard. You may not need three start times, but if you have a lot of runoff off your landscape, you probably need to have more than one start time. Again, the reason to have more than one start time is to allow the water enough time to soak into the soil. If you have heavy clay soils or you have a steep slope, without more than one start time, that water will often end in the gutter and sidewalk. Now, if you want to have more than one program, you would do the same thing. You would just set your, set your watering start time dial and then you would select program B. You want to make sure that your start times do not conflict with the start times of program A. And the same thing would go for program C. Again, you just want to make sure that none of those times conflict because otherwise the controller will uh, stack those schedules. Once we set up our program start times, the next step is to choose run times for each individual station. You'll set run times for only the zones that are to run under program A. Skip those zones that are to run under program B or C or even D if you have that going on. So the first thing you do is to turn the dial to set station run times. Note that we have program A, station one, and we have blinking here a run time of six minutes. And we have two start times set. Let's say we have some pop-up sprays and we want to run for a total of 10 minutes. So instead of putting 10 minutes in this screen, we want to actually put five minutes. So it'll run five minutes at five o'clock and then five minutes at seven o'clock. For zone two, let's say we have rotors and we want to run them for a total of 16 minutes. So in this case, we would use our plus and minus buttons to change that to eight minutes. So eight minutes at five o'clock and eight minutes at seven o'clock. So that's the way to do cycle and soak. You divide your run times between the two start times to prevent water runoff on the hardscape street or sidewalk. The next step is to set days to water. Now in the city of Oklahoma City, we are on permanent odd even watering restrictions since April 2013. So we're going to set odd or even watering days on this controller and we would do it by turning the dial to advanced watering cycles and you notice in the screen it says by day. We're going to take the plus or minus button to toggle through here and we see cyclic and we see odd and even. Now depending upon if your house ends with an odd number, you're going to leave that on odd. If it's even, it sets it and then you turn the dial to auto run. This controller has a built-in calendar, so it knows if a, if a month has 31 days or 30 days or 28 days, so you don't need to worry about changing your schedule every week or every month. If you have a controller where you cannot set odd or even, it's probably a good idea to upgrade your controller and purchase a current controller that can be set for odd or even scheduling. Once you've mastered these basics, we want to move to the watering percentage adjust feature. On this controller, it's known as seasonal adjust. You'll turn the dial to seasonal adjust and you'll see a 100% in the screen. You should have set your run times for a July schedule, which is a 100% schedule in Oklahoma, the hottest month of the year. From July throughout the rest of the year, you're going to use percentage adjusts to automatically turn down the run times for each zone. You're going to have to do this every month. 
using the plus or minus buttons, turn it down to 90%, 85, whatever the month. Here on the screen, you'll see some percentage adjustment estimates that you can use throughout the year. It's real important that this should be a uh, regular procedure for you. Each month, go out to your controller and make these seasonal adjustments to your schedule. The controller will not automatically do this, but when you, once you go out each month and use these percentage adjustments, it will change the run times by that percentage and it will help you save water, maximize your water conservation savings, lower your water bill, and uh, make you more efficient. Then, during the winter months of November, December, January, February, and most of March, turn your controller to the most important button, off. There's no need to be watering during the dead of winter in Oklahoma unless we get into prolonged drought. So there you have it, simple and easy controller programming. Don't let your controller run on the same schedule all year. Instead, become a smart landscape water manager. We hope this video was helpful to you. Our goal is for you to take control of your water management. For the City of Oklahoma City, I'm Robert Reeves. Let's squeeze every drop.